We're at the Zimmerman Mead Hall in Kentucky. And what I'm making today is a boucher, which is a fancy way of saying burnt mead, which is a lot better tasting than it sounds. Basically, I'm going to take this honey I've got in here, pour it into this pot, in this brew kettle, set it on the fire, which I've got at kind of a low heat. You can do this at home on a stove. You won't get a bit of the smoky flavor you might get from a fire. But just keep it on a fairly low heat, maybe medium low, something like that. Because you're basically going to simmer it for about an hour, stirring constantly with a long stir stick or spoon or whatever you've got. Because what you want to do is caramelize the honey. And if you, don't, if you stop stirring, it will very quickly burn the bottom of your pan. And, you know, a bit of a burnt flavor isn't bad because you're kind of looking for that. But it might be pretty difficult to get off your pan. So generally I make mead not heating the honey much at all because I want to keep all the good flavors that are in the honey, all the good wild yeast and microbes and all the good things that I think make good mead. But this is an old style of mead that requires cooking it because you want that burnt caramelized flavor. And as an added bonus, I've got some honey here that's already a bit burnt and caramelized in its own way. I came across this, an old beekeeper in Ohio had a whole fit, bunch of 55 gallon drums of it that they just couldn't use anymore. They couldn't sell it because it turned all dark. It tastes good, tastes like good honey but there wasn't much to do with it, so it's probably sat out in some old farmer's barn for I don't know how many years. Barrel's getting hot, contracting, expanding, so it's kind of cooked a little bit already in its own way. So I figured this would be a good one to make the mead with. What you want, you can do this in like a Dutch oven or something if you're doing a small amount, but remember when the honey starts heating up, it, it really starts to expand and it can easily overflow the pot. And that hot honey is like hot tar. It can hurt. So I'm going to do it in this 7 gallon brew kettle that I usually brew beer in. And as far as the amount, I'm going to put as much honey as I feel comfortable. Maybe about a third to a, a half. And just get it all nice and caramelized. And then when I go home, I'll switch it. I'll let it cool off. I'll put it in a, in a carboy or probably a 5 gallon bucket or a, a crock and put some yeast in and let it ferment. But at that time, I'll check the alcohol level and decide what I want. There's this fancy Viking instrument called a hydrometer. Actually, I came out well, well, well past the Vikings. But that's, that's a good way of checking your alcohol level. And if I want more alcohol, I add more honey. If I want less alcohol, I add more water. That's a whole different subject right there. But I'll be doing all that when I get home. So for now, I'm just going to put as much honey as I feel like putting in here. Pretty much as much as I've got in this bucket I think will do. And this honey is raw, not pasteurized, not filtered anything. It's even still got a little bit of pollen and stuff floating up that I'll filter out before I put it in my carboy to ferment. I mean, it's got a whole lot of that stuff still kind of floating down on the bottom there. When I first came across this stuff, it looked like really dirty, nasty tar or something. <laughs> anyway, that's all actually good stuff that's in there. And I've, I've got this on, I've had this fire going long enough that it's at a fairly low heat right now. I may be adding some some paper and stuff to get it going again, adjusting the wood. You know, but again, I don't want this to cook up too crazy. I may, I may increase the heat a little bit over time. But I'll be doing this for hopefully about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. And we'll kind of cut in and out and show you how it proceeds, how it looks. And until then, I'm just going to hang out here and drink some mead. Uh, I've got some Nordic farmhouse here from Grenfell Meadery in Vermont. I've been enjoying some of their meat lately while I'm waiting for all of my meat to ferment and 
age and be ready to drink. So until then, keep following this and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> That's going to be a smoky one. This is still pretty early in the process. Stirring, stirring, stirring. Stirring, stirring, stirring. Stirring! Let me eat. I'm still stirring it. It hasn't really gotten crazy and caramelized yet. I think I probably should increase the heat some. I've already turned it up a little bit. But I, I may very well lift this pot off, get some more under there. Because if nothing else, I'm going to have a nice smoky meat, but I really want this to get caramelized. So I'm just going to keep stirring. Stirring, stirring, stirring. That's pretty much what all you get to do here. Stir. Oh. Hey, Thor. What is that? What do you think it is? It's mead. Hold my hand. Hold your hand. Why do you mean hold your hand? Okay. Um, so, yeah, you just keep stirring. Can I just leave it here for now? Yeah. Um, I'm going to let it go if that's okay. This drink. I like it. Another. All righty. You want some more? Well, I'm going to finish drinking when I've got my horn here, and that'll be ready technically in a couple years. So just come back anytime. I'm immortal. All right. We'll be good. Thanks for showing up. Hey. How'd you pick that up so easy? It is mine. Alrighty. Catch you later, Thor. Okay, anyway, yeah, just keep stirring. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up here in a little bit. Okay. This has been going maybe 20 minutes or so. I got the fire going a little higher. It's definitely starting to heat up. You can see where that foam is starting to develop when you're not stirring. And that technical term for that is the scum. But I don't really consider it scum. I think it's all awesome stuff. But regardless, that's going to start foaming up like crazy soon. And you know, it's going to get very interesting. So we'll just have to see what happens. Okay, I can already tell it's starting to caramelize a little bit here. But it's probably still got a ways to go. Now there's a good chance this is how the Vikings made their meat, not with the stainless steel kettle, obviously. But they would have they used magic sticks that they called totem sticks. And it had yeast from each batch. Now if they heated up too much it would pasteurize it, but they didn't know what pasteurization was. So they used this stick over and over and each time they used it it would initiate fermentation quicker or they just had one that they would use each time to stir when they're heating it up. We don't really know exactly how the Vikings made mead. We've got pretty good ideas of how they did it. We've got a lot of archaeological research, all that sort of thing. But the important thing is that you make mead like a Viking. Be as Viking as you can while you are making your mead. Whatever that means to you. Listen to awesome Viking themed music. Be a nerd. It's very important to be a nerd. Nerds are critical to the advancement of our society. They keep the myths going. They are the ones who are the torchbearers for all that is awesome. They may be mocked in their time, but the original Viking storytellers, the Skalds, were well respected. They were the nerds of their time, but they were respected nerds. So, as far as I'm concerned, be a nerd. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a very smoky. Meat. Starting to foam up, get frothy. It's getting excited. So was as excited as we are. So we're getting close. Still got a ways to go though. It's gonna start really foaming up here soon. I gotta keep stirring good. 
Doesn't that look like a nice giant pot of espresso brewing? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> Stand over here if you need to. Look at it go. You can see why the Vikings thought this was magic. I mean, they got really, really excited when it did this sort of thing while it was fermenting. Oh, good. Go that way. Yeah, look at that. That's almost what a really vigorous fermentation can look like. Just bubbling and foamy and exciting. I'm at the point now where this much honey has come up this high because I've just got to keep stirring it to keep it from going crazy. Oh man. Ever since my lawn keeper got a hold of those adamantium claws, he seems to be working all the time. I'm tired of it. Oh well, at least he keeps things under check. Look how exciting that is. It's going bubbly crazy. It could just go over and just foam over everything with some hot tar honey. But we're not going to let that happen. We're going to keep stirring and get smoke in our eyes, but it's so worth it. Okay, cat. I almost let it get away from me. Left it for a moment and it just started bubbling up and foaming over. And remember, there's no water in here yet. This is just the honey because we're trying to caramelize it and I can tell nothing's sticking to the bottom yet. So if you happen to do this, <coughs> thank you, Smoke. <laughs> if you happen to do this over your kitchen sink, keep in mind, you may end up having a big, nasty mess that's very difficult to clean up. I have from time to time while I'm doing this, taking this off of the fire, just to give it a moment to cool down. Really, I should probably be doing this with heat resistant gloves or something because I don't want this stuff to caramelize and burn my hands, but I'm going to do my best. Ah! There. So every once in a while, take it off the heat. And it will calm down for a moment. It'll still be heating up. Cooking, going crazy. Still stirring. Mead involves a lot of stirring and waiting. Stirring and waiting, stirring and waiting. If those are your two favorite things to do, then a mead maker is what you should be. Ah. Just trying to keep this stuff from boiling over again. Getting close. It's hot enough that it very quickly. At some point, I'm going to add some water into it, and that's going to cause it to all chill out. But I want to caramelize a good bit first. You can have this maybe 45 minutes, possibly an hour. I don't know. Yeah, meat making is hard work. Wolverine at it again. Oh, it's that guy. Still stern. Had to take off the heat a little bit because it's starting to boil over. I'm getting ready to put it back on the heat and get it going again. Man, that goofy Viking guy wouldn't shut up. I can't believe how easy it was to steal his costume. And now. I have this pot full of basically boiling tar. Who should I dump it on? Hey, camera guy. Come here. Cut. 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 I'm not supposed to be talking to the camera. Cut. It's heavy. I have to take it off the heat yet again. Blah, blah, stirring, blah, 
blá, 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 Vikings, blá, blá, me, blá, blá, Vikings, blá, blá, me, I like me. A little bit hot, not too bad. I probably got maybe this much honey in here. But it's foaming up like it's almost completely full. So it's all kind of boiling down, getting nice and caramelized. It's going to be delicious. Yeah. Kinds of strange noises around here. That was my beer! Excuse me, sir, I was going to pick it up quick. Jeremy not... Zimmerman. Yes, sir. That's, that's, it's kind of hot. It's, it's like boiling hot. Jeremy Zimmerman, yeah, you is. have failed this mead. What mead? What mead? This isn't, this isn't a mead, this is burnt honey. Now, oh. if you want to come back in about maybe two years when I've fermented it and aged it and I'm ready to drink it, you can let me know, but... Okay. I mean, no, I, I, I do appreciate that the mead patrol exists because it's very important. We need to know that good mead is being made. But thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll just go home then. You've got to have some villainy to defeat somewhere. Go find some bad meat that's been fermented fully. Stirring, stirring, stirring. Sometimes all I do is stir. I don't know how many hours it's been, but I think we're about there. I hope. It's starting to get somewhere. Look at all that yumminess. It smells delicious. Stirring, but I'm Batman. It's down to about here, honey wise. It's gonna start filming up again because it's hot. I think we're plenty caramelized. I'm gonna add some water to it in a moment. Stirring, stirring, stirring. Keep that honey a stirring. All right, bubbling up again. I've done this for way too long. I am ready to add some water. Oh, let's see what happens. It could go crazy. It could not go crazy. If you've got it super hot at this point, it could fizz and foam and hiss and go crazy. At this point, I can guarantee this is very well caramelized. We're down to a fair bit less of the honey than we originally had. Ah. Unfortunately, I didn't burn myself with that, but I did have some honey splash up on me. I'm going to add a couple gallons. Some good spring water for now. And when I get home, I'll use my fancy Viking hydrometer to maybe add some more water, possibly some more honey, to figure out the alcohol content. But I want this to end up being around 18% because I want this to be a nice, smoky, caramely, brandy sort of a mead. Which from my understanding of Boucher's and from what I've tasted, that's about what it should turn out to be. That's very important at this point. Especially if you let this get to a real strong boil. That you add the water and not just set this aside and forget about it. <laughs> because without water, you leave it, you do nothing with it, it turns to rock candy. If you want rock candy in the bottom of your brew pot, have at it. But <laughs> smoky mead. A little bit hot. I'm gonna take it off the heat. No, I'm not, just yet. Okay. We've now got burnt honey, or caramelized if you will. Dilute it with a couple of gallons of water. I'm gonna keep it in this overnight. Tomorrow I'll probably add it to probably my five gallon crock, possibly a five gallon brewing bucket, plastic bucket. We'll see, one way or the other, I'm gonna let it 
ferment in the open air to give it lots of aeration. And you can use a wide range of measts. That, that's what you call a, 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 a meat yeast, is a meast. I think I just made that term up. Anyway. You can use a wide range of yeasts with this. This is going to be a very sweet yeast. I personally hope to get it to an 18% or so alcohol level. But you can also use something like Lavalin D47. There's a whole lot of yeast you can use that are designed for semi-sweet meat or, my, or wine. What I'm going to use is this wild yeast starter that I put together about a week ago. Mix some honey and water, added some stuff to it. I've got a whole video on how to do this and I've also got an entire book, Make Me Like a Viking, and some other stuff you can find online if you just Google me, Jeremy Zimmerman. Hard to say if you can hear that around all the other forest noises, but that is a fizzing active yeast starter. So I'll be using this instead of a package yeast to start it. But for now, we gotta let it cool down to room temperature, 60, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we will make meat out of it. And hopefully at some point we will do a video or update you on how awesome it tastes because I know it's gonna taste awesome and better. Till then. Skull. Skull.